dear students, welcome to your new academic year. Are you looking forward? We are so excited to do this journey with you. Fun and interesting things are awaiting you. So let's begin. In page number five, you will see a beautiful story of friendship between Lara the Mina and Tom the Squirrel. If you did not get a chance to read the story, now is a good time if you can pause the video and read the story, you will be able to do all the exercises as we go ahead. In every unit, you will find there are new words. We will learn the new words and their meanings so that you can use them in your vocabulary. It can improve your communication like when you speak or when you write. So let's look at the new words in this unit. The first word is tidy. T-I-D-Y. Tidy means to clean and put things in its proper places. I'm sure you tidy up your house or your toys and your mom tides, tidies up the kitchen after she cooks and you tidy up the dining table after you have a meal. So tidy is to clean and put things in its proper place. Let's go to the next word, sneak, to move quietly with the idea of not getting caught. Sneak, to move quietly with the idea of not getting caught. The wild cat was trying to sneak and attack the helpless baby bird. Pounce, to attack suddenly by jumping on something. The wild cat was trying to pounce on the baby bird. Scamper, to run quick with light steps. The cat scampered when Tom the squirrel helped the baby miner. I'm sure there are many more words that are new to you. Make a list of them and discuss it with your parents so you can learn new words as well as their meanings. Let's move on. The next exercise is to fill in the blanks with appropriate opposites. Appropriate opposites from the lesson. What are opposites? As all of you know, opposites are words that contradict each other. For example, ugly. The opposite of it is beautiful. Then small. The opposite would be big. So these words contradict each other. Let's go ahead and do some of those in the exercise that is given for you. Next one is to add ed to a word. When you add ed, it becomes a word of a past. That is, I did it, something like that. I cooked or I listened, I danced. So when you add ed to the word, it becomes a word of the past. So let's take a look at some of the words because it's a little tricky. Let's Let's add ed. So let's take the word listen. So when we add ed, you get the word listened. But look at this word. This is dance, d-a-n-c-e. So when you add ed to it, then you have to drop an E, drop the E. So it becomes danced. Did you see? Let's take another word, live. So live plus ED gives you lived. We had to drop the E again if you notice. Let's take another example of ask. Ask, when you add the ed to it, you get asked. All right, so it's as simple as that. And if you give it a little attention, you'll be able to see which are the words you have to drop the e and which are the words you don't have to. All right, let's go ahead. 
Now it's time for question and answer. Now for this, you have to have your notebook and your pens ready. But you have to pause the video and go ahead and answer the questions. But if you also like to do it at the end of the video, it's left to you. The idea of asking you to write the answers to the questions is so that you can learn to make complete sentences or in other words, sentences that make sense. All right, but when you write the answers, make sure you remember that you start the sentence with a capital letter, capital letter, and at the end of a sentence, you will place a full stop. For example, I went to school. This is a sentence and how do we start? I started with a capital and I end it with a full stop. The full stop is also called as a period. All right, so you can go ahead and pause the video and fill in the answers in the notebook. We are going to learn some grammar. So, we'll continue even in the grammar to learn how to make proper sentence. If you take a look at the exercise D, which is match the following to form complete sentence. In one section, on your left, you can see a few words, a few sentences, which are not complete. So, let's complete that with the half sentences, which is given on the other side. Let's take an example. Lara has. If you try to match it with the few sentences, let's see how it goes. Lara has busy collecting nuts. That doesn't make any sense. Let's try the next one. Lara has sing beautifully. That doesn't make sense either. Let's try the third one. Lara has three babies. Well, that sounds like it's a complete sentence. So, in the same manner, you can look at the others and match the following. The idea is to help you to make complete sentences. All right. The next one is verbs. Almost every sentence that you read or write or hear will have verbs. Verbs is very important part of a sentence and it is called the action or the action word that you or I or someone else or something does. So, verb is an action, action or action word. Okay, let, let me make it more clear to you. What am I doing? I am speaking. So, my action is speaking and you are listening. So, your action word or the verb is listening. Now, take a look around. Your mom is cooking. Your dad is reading a newspaper. Your brother is playing with a toy. So, what are the action verbs in this? Mom is cooking. Dad is reading. Your brother or your sister is playing. So, did you understand? Verb is an action that you or I or someone else or something does. That is verbs for you. Any action that is done by the person or a thing that is called action. So, let's look at one or two examples from our exercise in E. The dog is digging the ground. Digging is the action. The next one, Rima is planting small plants in her grandmother's garden. What is Rina doing? Rima doing? Rima is planting. So, planting is a verb or the action word. In similar manner, you can go ahead and read the sentences and underline the action verbs. Communication, reading, 
writing, listening, speaking, they are all communication. Communication is the way that you convey your ideas and your thoughts to another human being or on a platform or somewhere where you want to express what you feel. All right, so here we'll start with listening. Listening is also a method of communication so you can learn new ideas and you can process it. All right, so here we are going to talk about the eating habits of miners and squirrels. It's time for you to listen. Miners live on worms and grains while the squirrels love to eat nuts and seeds. They both are different likings. All right, speaking. Let's move on to speaking. Talk about the favorite food of any one animal that you like. It could be your pet animal like a cat or maybe a dog or maybe a fish or any other animal. So what you do is you write down the points and then you speak about it either to your family or your group of friends. So that helps you to communicate what your ideas are. Writing. Birds make their nest in the trees but there are other animals who are also part of the trees like for example we saw that Tom the squirrel lived in the trunk of the tree. So there are other animals who have the trees as their homes. Can you find out a few of them and write it down? You can write two lines each about their homes. All right, moving on. This is a very unique poem and it talks about the guest list of elephants party. If you got a chance to read, you will understand how wide the variety of animals who came to the elephants party. If you did not get a chance, now would be a good time for you to go and read the fun poem. Think of all the animals, the birds, the sea animals, the wild animals, the domestic animals, all of them attended the party. It must have been quite a fun party. So if you did not get a chance to read the poem, you could pause the video and just go through it. It's really interesting and fun. All right, as I mentioned earlier, we get to learn new words in every unit and that helps us to build our vocabulary. Let's see what are the new words that we learned in this poem. Otter, a semi-aquatic fish-eating animal with a long body and long fur. So let's put them down, the new words that we are learning in this chapter. Otter. Otter is a semi-aquatic fish-eating animal. That means semi-aquatic means half on the land and half in the water. And it has a long body and lot of fur. The second word is hog. That means a domesticated pig, that the kind of pigs that you find on the farm, like the old McDonald's farm. All right. The third word is oyster. Oysters are eaten, oyster shells, they find the pearl. So oysters are quite a famous um, aquatic animal. It's a small animal with a soft body and hard shell in two pieces. So that is an oyster. Next one is eel. Eel is a long fish that looks like a snake. All right, next one is teal. It's a small duck with a short neck that lives in and around fresh water. So that's also almost a animal that likes the water. The last and the most interesting word is caboodle. It means a group of people or things. And if you remember the poem, it said, I do hope he baked a caboodle of cakes. Imagine so many animals and you need so much of cake to feed all the animals. So we learned the new word caboodle which means a group of things or people. 
all right those are the new words that we learn now you know the meanings as well you can try and use them in your conversation next time moving on in page number 11 exercise a you can find write a rhyming word for each of the following rhyming is that new for you i'm sure you've read it in poems and many other times rhyming words but today let's look at what is a rhyming word it's a repetition of same or similar ending sound it's a repetition of same or similar ending sounds same or similar ending sound that means ending something is very similar let's take for example all of you know tall small so the like we mentioned the ending sound is similar all right the next one let's try another one car another the rhyming word for jar there are so many car so many rhyming words for car let's try one jar far char there are so many words and did you see that the ending word is a group of letter called ar okay the beginning words are all difference okay so they are same or similar ending sound now the good thing about rhymes are it adds a fun and interesting element to your conversation or to your writing your work your uh, whatever you write or you speak can get a little more fun because you're adding rhyming words to it so you can go ahead and finish those exercises in page number 11 i have written down some myself for down example the first one take the first example down i have written clown town frown all right goes the list of words that can rhyme with down so i'm sure you can go ahead and write the rest and you will enjoy it as well i can promise you that now it's time for question and answers which means you have to take out your notebook and your pen and get ready to write the answers to the questions about the subject that we just learned that is the poem here is the first question so you can pause the video right now and start writing in your notebook or you can wait till the end of the video so you can write the answers at leisure name the animals that were invited to elephant's birthday party that's quite a long list but remember that when you make the sentence it needs to start with a capital and end with a full stop and also you need to make sure it makes sense all right okay now we are going on to learn some more grammar let's see what's the grammar that we are going to learn today you know grammar is like a backbone of english you need to know grammar so you can speak and convey your ideas clearly and properly all right so today's grammar again we are going back to making sentences It's like every time you learn, you're learning a new um, step or you're taking a new step about this grammar. Here in page number 12 and exercise C, you can see arrange the following words correctly to make proper sentences. All right, that's something that we were talking. Use capital letters, capital letters to start a sentence and at the end of a sentence you use a full stop that's what we were talking all this while now let's learn a little more in depth as i mentioned so in sentences there are two kinds there is a statement sentence okay and then there is a question sentence all right Let's look at the first one, statement sentence. 
you're making a statement and usually the statement sentence ends with a full stop and you know a new one and an exclamatory mark all right so let's learn what they are i had my lunch it's a statement i made so the statement ends with a full stop and what's the other word for full stop period all right now there's a new part of sentence that we are going to learn and it's called exclamatory mark when do we use exclamatory mark when there is when there is a strong feeling or excitement then we use an exclamatory mark at the end of the sentence for example let's take this example these flowers are beautiful you can use an exclamatory mark because it is conveying a strong feeling or excitement all right so that is statement sentences now let's go to question sentences the question sentence itself tells you that it carries a question for example let's take this did you have lunch you can guess what will be at the end of this sentence it will be a question mark second one let's use the same sentence and see how we can make it into a question statement are these flowers beautiful again question mark so that's the difference between a question statement and question sentence and a statement sentence so i'll repeat a statement sentence has a full stop or a period and also it has a exclamatory mark at the end of this sentence all right let's take one example from our exercise and then i will let you do the rest by yourself going i am cricket to play that's quite a jumbled up sentence we have to make it into a sentence which is proper or one which makes sense this is all jumbled up so when we correct it it will be i am going to play cricket and it's a statement sentence as i am going to play cricket and we put a full stop at the end so why don't you try the rest of the sentences and arrange them in proper order and use the proper punctuations all right that brings us to the end of unit 1